In this video, we're going to see how the Bernoulli's equation can be used to determine various parameters in a fluid system. In this example, we're going to begin with a descriptive question, but we're going to use that descriptive question in order to produce a sketch, and from that sketch, we're going to be able to determine which of the terms in the Bernoulli's equations we can disregard. Now, this particular descriptive example has been borrowed from freestudy.co.uk, and it relates to a horizontal nozzle carrying a fluid of density 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. But as we read the question, what we want to do is extract as much information as possible. So it tells us that a horizontal nozzle reduces from a 100 millimeter bore diameter at the inlet to 50 millimeter bore at the exit. So the first useful piece of information is that this is horizontal. So there's not going to be any elevation at either position one or position two, and it reduces in diameter. Now we don't know what type of reduction we've got, but we can assume that it's something like that. Note that this is just a sketch so that we can get our head around what each of the parameters represent. It goes on to tell us that it carries a liquid of density 1000 kilograms per meter cubed. So let's make a note, rho equals 1000, kilograms per meter cubed and it tells us that it's flowing at a rate of 0.005 meters cubed. Now it doesn't specify whether that's a mass flow rate or a volume flow rate but we know that it's a volume flow rate because the units are meters cubed per second. If it was a mass flow rate it would be kilograms per second. The other thing that we notice here is that's already in SI units, meters cubed per second. So Q equals 0 0.05 meters cubed per second. Now it's important to note that the volume flow rate at position 1, so at the left of our duct, equals the volume flow rate at position 2. Because whatever volume of fluid passes position 1 every second must pass position 2 every second. There's nowhere for fluid to be gained or lost between those two positions. It goes on to tell us that the pressure at the wide end is 500 kilopascals gauge. Well just from our sketch we know that our wide end is position 1. So we know that P1 is 500 kilopascals. And it wants us to calculate the pressure at the narrow end. So that wants us to calculate the pressure P2. It also tells us to neglect friction. So let's refer back to our Bernoulli's equation. The fact that at the end of the question there it says neglect friction means we can get rid of our term on the far right hand side. If we go back to the far left hand side, P1 is given. The next term is rho GZ1. Well, as this pipe's horizontal, if we take our datum at the center of the pipe, then Z1 and Z2 are both going to be zero. Anything times zero is zero. Therefore, as neither side is elevated in relation to the other, we can get rid of rho GZ1, and we can get rid of rho GZ2. The third term, moving from left to right, is rho U1 squared over two. Well, we have a volume flow rate at both position 1 and position 2, therefore the fluid's going to have a velocity at position 1, u1, but it's also going to have a velocity at position 2, u2. So we can rewrite our Bernoulli's equation now. P1 plus rho u1 squared over 2 equals P2 plus rho u2 squared over 2. Now what the question is asking us to find this time is P2. So the way that we get P2 on its own is by subtracting rho u2 squared over 2 from each side. I'm going to switch the left and right hand sides as well, but we're going to get P2 equals P1 plus rho u1 squared over 2 minus rho u2 squared divided by 2. So we're trying to find P2, P1 is given, we need to determine U1 and U2 from our volume flow rate. Well we know from earlier tutorials that Q 
equals u a. But because the volume flow rate is the same at position 1 and position 2, we can rewrite that q equals u1a1, which equals u2a2. So if we want to determine u1 using this part here, all we need to do is divide each side by a1. And if we want to determine u2, again, all we would need to do is divide by a2. So let's set up our equations for calculating u1 and u2. So we have u1 is just q over a1, and we have u2 is just q over a2. All I've done there is rearrange the previous formula. We have our volume flow rate already, and we also have the diameter of the duct at each of the positions. So we can rewrite this. We would have q over pi r squared for the area. So pi r1 squared when calculating u1. And when calculating u2, all we would do is use r2. So we know at the wide end, the diameter is 100 millimetres. Therefore, the radius is 50 millimetres. And dividing 50 by 1,000, we get 0 0.05 for the radius in metres. So calculating U1, we have the volume flow rate 0 0.05 divided by pi times 0 0.05 squared giving us a velocity u1 equal to 6.366 metres per second. And repeating for u2, we have 0 0.05 for the volume flow rate, divided by pi times radius 2 squared. Well, the diameter at position 2 is 50 millimetres meaning the radius is 25 millimetres. Dividing by 1,000 to get metres is just 0 0.025. Square that, and we get a velocity u2 equal to 25.465. And again, that's metres per second. I'm going to transfer the values of U1 and U2 into the bottom left hand corner and then we can calculate the pressure at position 2 using the Bernoulli's equation. OK, so to finish then, we have P2 equals P1. P1 is given as 500 kilopascals or 500,000 pascals. We have a density of a thousand and a velocity one of six point three six six. From that, we need to subtract the density times velocity two squared, twenty five point four six five. divided by 2, giving us a pressure at position 2 equal to 196,030. So that's 196.0 kilopascals. So the pressure in the pipe at position 2 equals 196 kilopascals when compared with the pressure at position 1 of 500 kilopascals. The reason for this is as the nozzle reduces, the velocity at position two increases, so the fluid gains kinetic energy, therefore it must lose pressure energy. So at position two, we have higher kinetic energy, but we have lower pressure energy. And at position one, we have lower kinetic energy because the fluid's traveling more slowly, but we actually have higher pressure energy, because as one increases, the other actually decreases.